Amen. Amen. Good morning. How Good are we morning, doing this Bethany morning? Family. Good Come morning, on, everybody, as y'all start to that. come in. We are so <laughs> thankful to have y'all this morning. As people start to come into the sanctuary, as people start to tune in online, we are excited to have you. We are excited to have you join yes. us in this encounter worship experience this morning. Everyone, look to your neighbor left and right. Say good morning. Thank you for coming in. If you are a visitor, we are so happy to have you. And if you're watching us online, it's your first time, thank you for joining us this morning. And what would you like you to do is go ahead and like, share, comment, let someone yes. know that you're watching because we're going to have a good time here, Bethany. Amen? Amen. We ready to have a good time this morning? Amen. He's a father. There we go. He's a son. Depending on who he's talking to, he presents himself as one of those. Let me run it by you again. He's a man. He's also a son. Also a father. Now on his job, he has influence. Because he run the whole thing. Because he's a man. When in front of his mother, he acts like a son. If he got sense. But it doesn't stop him from being a man. Because he's representing himself as a son. But then his children come home. He's still a man, he's still a son, but now he's representing himself as a father. Rich the father, rich the son, and rich the man. Three. You got it? You got it? Amen. I know the video was cut off a little bit in the beginning with the sound, but... It really is a beautiful demonstration of the Holy Ghost yes. and the power that he plays in our life mm -hmm. to be a source of protection. Yeah. Um, and as we learned last week, Jesus is the face of the Holy Spirit. Yes. So no matter what we're going through, we know that we have him in our lives to protect us, mm -hmm. guide us, and he can be in our lives in so many different ways, right? Mm -hmm. So how do we grow closer to him? Through our worship. Yes. Through our yes. praise. Coming humbly before him and saying, Lord, I don't know what's going yeah. on right now in my Lay it life, at his feet. Yeah. but I know that you got it, mm -hmm. and you have it all under control, so I'm going to trust in you, believe in you, and trust yeah. that the, although things may not look like it right now, everything is going to be okay. Amen? Amen. Can, can you all agree with me on that? Touch and agree on that? Amen. <laughs> Amen. So I can't wait for the rest of the word that we're going to get this week, mm -hmm. because I know that it's going to be a phenomenal story. Amen. This is the grand story of God, created in the image of God to reflect his character into the world. The relationship between humanity and the Almighty was torn apart by sin. The sacrifice of Jesus on the cross brings us back into the relationship for which we were originally designed, for which we were all originally designed. In Christ, there has been a mending of relationships, one that begins with God, and then moves outward into all of our relationships. And once that happens, once our unique redemption story begins to take shape, we have the responsibility and the power to flourish and to help others do the same. This is the grand story of God, but we'll need to pause 
to rethink and to reset. What if God really is writing his story? And what if it involves you? What if it's for the sake of the world? And what if it ultimately reveals the glory of his great name? This is your invitation to experience it, to find yourself in it, and to experience abundant life because of it. Because when that happens, when we find ourselves living in the grand story of God, well, that might just change everything. Amen. Yeah. Amen. We are all a part of God's grand story, playing, playing characters in his story and trying to get closer and closer to him. And how we get involved in that story, how we get involved in that king, kingdom involves our participation, involves yes. our connection with God, involves loving God, loving others, and loving ourselves as well. How many times have we had moments in our lives where the story for us looks like the end or a new chapter is about to begin and we're not ready? We're, it's because we're thinking about our story and not about God's yeah. grand story. Amen? We're thinking that we are the authors, we are the ones who are writing the story. We're not in charge of that. We're not the ones in control of that. And we thank God because, I don't know about you, Maya, because if I had to write my own story, I think I would have, a chapter would have been closed. It been done a, <laughs> a few years ago, chapters would have been closed for me. But thank God that he continues to write our story. He continues to write my story. Yes. He continues to write Can your story. Can we get story. an amen on that, guys? Amen. God is writing our story. He is writing our story each and every day, writing new people into our story, yes. writing people out of our story so that he can get the glory in our lives. We thank God for how he continues to move in our lives, how he continues to grow in our lives, being that main author, adding characters and building and building in our lives. We thank him for so much yes. and becoming involved in that grand story mm -hmm. and being a part of that grand story. Right, Maya? Uh, I don't know if you guys are getting it out there because God is in our story. Mm -hmm. Do you hear me? Mm -hmm. Do you guys hear me? God is in our story. Amen. That is something to give him praise for because our stories could look completely, completely different, different than how they look right now. Completely different. And so as Deja said, we all have a role to play in the grand mm -hmm. story of God. Yes. And Mark uh, 16, 15, I believe, says, go out into the world mm -hmm. and make disciples. Yes. And that's a calling that we all have to go out into the world, go out into our neighborhood. Yeah. And to let someone know how good God has been in our lives. Yeah. How he has kept us yeah. through dangers seen and yeah. unseen. Yeah. How at times when we thought that we wouldn't we wouldn't make it. Yeah, God no, said, many Look, times. I am yeah. the author of this story, yeah. so I know how it's going to end. So we are going to go out and share that love of God, share how good He has yes. been in our lives, because yes. we know that the story is still yet to be finished, Amen. and it's going to be beautiful. Amen. are happy to be in Bethany Church this morning. Yeah? We can be anywhere in the world, any church in the world, but we are in Bethany Church this morning. So we are so excited because today is our Get Connected Day, if you didn't know. So what that is, is calling us to connect to a ministry, connect to each other. So take time to get connected. And yes. we want to make sure that as you remember to get connected, that you remember that you are in the house of the Lord Amen. for two reasons. To get some word and to get some worship, right? Are you guys right? ready to worship Are we today? ready for worship this morning? I don't know. Are you guys ready to worship know. today? God's been good. I don't know. Let's go right now. Let's get ready for worship. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the 
Lord, everyone, help me lift up the name of Jesus. He's worthy to be praised. Will you help me lift him up? He's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy. Help me lift him up. Hallelujah, he's worthy to be praised. Woke you up this morning, he's worthy. Hey, traveling mercy, he's worthy, he's worthy, he's worthy. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, he's been good. Hallelujah. He's been good. Hallelujah. He's been good. Hallelujah. Wonderful Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God, we don't know how to say thank you in the way that's in our heart. God, all, you're all inside of us, oh God. We filled up with thanksgiving in our heart today. God, you have been with us, oh God, through thick and thin. And God, for that, we just want to say thank you. God, when we didn't know that there was going to be a way out of circumstances, you were right there with us, God, and for that we say thank you. When we were in the hospital, God, and they were giving all kind of reports, you showed up and lifted us up, oh God. And oh God, for that we say thank you. God, there is a thank you in the house today. We didn't come with a shopping list today, God. There is a thank you in the house today because you've just been that mighty good. God, we thank you, God, for how you're tearing down walls. You're tearing down walls of depression. And, oh, God, for that we say thank you. You're tearing down the walls of sickness. And, oh, God, for that we say thank you. You're tearing down walls, oh, God, for of oppression, oh, God, and hopelessness. And, oh, God, for that we say thank you. You're tearing down walls of lack, oh, God. And I forgot we say thank you. Oh, God, you're tearing down walls of strife, oh, God, and envy. And for that we say thank you. God, continue to move in our life as only you can. In the name of Jesus, we lift up the bishop of the house today, God, in the name of Jesus. We come in corporate agreement for his life today, God, in the name of Jesus. Bless his body, bless his mind, oh God. Bless his ministry as never before. Bless his family, we do pray. In the name of Jesus, we pray, oh God, that you will save souls today by the power of your spirit, that you will reclaim backsliders today, oh God, by the power of your spirit, that you will let somebody know today, oh God, that they have found a place that they can call home today in the name of Jesus. Send your word with power and authority oh God. Send liberty today in the name of Jesus. We thank you for what you're going to do in this place. And we give your name the glory, the honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. 
Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Hallelujah. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that have made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with what? Hallelujah! With thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Why? For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Hallelujah. Put those blessed hands together. Come on, let's bless him like we know him. God is good. I said God is good. Somebody say all the time. Take your seats if you can. We have some babies to pray for this morning. Praise the Lord. Will all who have come to accompany Prince and heir Antoine come at this time? Church, say amen. amen. This is Prince the Second. Air is in my hand. Come on, let's pray. God, we bless your name. Continue to prove to us that you are the beginner, the sustainer, and you complete all of our lives. I thank you first that you have birthed these children into a God-centered family. I give you praise today for your goodness and your mercy. I thank you for these children, especially this one that's moving around in my arm. <laughs> thank you for blessing them with wholeness, health, happiness, and strength. I ask you to bless the children from the top of their heads to the very soles of their feet every cell, every organ, every function, we speak blessing and help on them right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you that you've given them to us to steward their lives. I ask you to send the family all the resources they need to give them every advantage in life. Help us to train them up in the way they should go, loving you, 
respecting their parents, and accomplishing all you've created them to accomplish. I give you praise. Come on back here, man. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> now, God, as they pursue this life that you have birthed them to pursue, I ask you to give them wisdom before the years. Give them the discernment they need to choose the right friends. Open every door and then walk them through it, Lord. I pray victory in their lives. I pray uncommon wisdom in their lives. I pray your divine favor over this entire family. Now, God, we sow victory into their minds, into their hearts. We dedicate them to you and we thank you for lending them to us. Now, God, bless them, heart, mind, and soul, in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you. Good job, Wonderful. Wonderful job. Thank you. Sharp girl. Oh, got you. You got it going on. for the beautiful family yeah. and the beautiful baby. Amen. Amen. We thank God for the children of God, right? It is such a blessing when little people get involved in the church, right? Absolutely. Amen. So. For that reason, mm -hmm. we are excited to announce that our youth ministry is now expanding to include grades 6 through 8. Amen. Up in our admin Amen. wing, academic wing. So go ahead and register your child because the, the knowledge that is being imparted into yeah. their lives yeah. and how to walk forward in this world in faith is, you know, out of this world. Mm -hmm. So we definitely want to make sure that you guys know about that. Amen. And we want to make sure that the little people know about God's word as well. So that's why we are starting Bible study for them. Can we get a hand clap for that? Yes. April 24th. Amen. Amen. From kindergarten all the way to fifth grade, make sure that you register your children up so that they can get Bible study. It's going to be starting April 24th at 7 p.m. So make sure that they know the word as well as you, right? Amen. Right, guys? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Okay, as you guys know, this year we are making a declaration to God that we are going to let our hearts break mm -hmm. for what breaks his. Amen. Yeah. So we are excited because we have special pins just as a, a visual representation yeah, of that. Yeah, token. Um, that are available now at the Harvest Bookstore, mm -hmm. as well as we are selling them after service today. So that next week when we come together, we want to give you guys a little bit more time to get your pins. <laughs> we will be having a special pinning ceremony as we make that declaration that together as a church family that, God, we will break our hearts. We will submit to you and be of service, yeah. be of ministry of service to your people. So go ahead again, visit the Harvest Bookstore or visit After Church so that you can bring a pin home for yourself. Amen. And how many people are excited for Power of God? Yes. Yeah. This is the first time we are going to have Power of God in four years, so you know we are going to have a good time. Mm -hmm. Who's coming? Who's coming? Oh, my goodness. The, who is coming? Let me get, <laughs> listen, we have Reverend Al Sharpton, okay. Reverend Marissa Farrell, Pastor Jerry Carter, uh, y'all can say amen now, like these are people, <laughs> Bishop Joseph Walker, Bishop Tundra uh, Bismarck, Prophet Amal Tang, and then for our musical guest, we have Anthony Brown and Therapy Group, 
Tim yeah. Bowman, and Hezekiah Walker. I don't know about y'all, but I'm going to make sure that my butt is in the house of the Lord during that <laughs> week because it is going to be a good time. So make sure after service you go ahead and register. You can register at one of our tables, and then we'll let you know when it's time to register online. Amen? Amen. Get Amen. excited, guys. It's going to be amazing. Oh, it's going to be time. So guess what? Today is Get Connected Sunday. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. This is a wonderful opportunity that we can come together as a church family and get connected in ministry and in service. So following service today, we have all of our ministries that are out in the, hall, in the main hallway. Mm -hmm. You can go and see what's happening here. Yeah. You know, we are the church that never sleeps. You know, this Seriously. is a way that you can get involved <laughs> yeah. in ministry. So yeah. I do invite you to go ahead um, and see what you can do to sell your time, talent, treasure in that way. Um, but I also want you guys to think about how can we be involved in ministry, not only here locally, but abroad. Because yeah. we know the mission is great. Mm -hmm. And we are the church that transforms lives around the world. Globally. Okay. Yes. So mm -hmm. keep that in mind as we sow into ministry through our service, through our treasure, and how we can make an impact around us. Millions of girls like Mahana walk up to six kilometers every day for water that can make them sick. That's 3.7 miles. And what's in the water isn't the only threat. As they walk, they risk abuse, trafficking, and dangerous animals. Flooding or falling can lead to drownings. And the time spent walking means girls miss school or drop out entirely. Entire futures, gone. Globally, one in 10 people have no access to clean water. We are dedicated to transforming the world around us, not just in spirit, but in tangible, life-changing actions. Through our partnerships and the unwavering commitment of our community, we take action, providing clean water by building wells and ensuring sustainable living by providing animals to those in need. But at the heart of our mission is the love of God, a love that we are eager to share with the world around us. That's the kind of transformation we aim for, a movement that starts here at Bethany and reaches out to impact the world in profound ways. Together, we can create a transformation that doesn't just change lives, but reshapes the very world around us. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Uh, as we prepare our hearts, as we prepare our hearts for our missions offering, I'm the wrong person to sing. You don't want that. Uh, go to Deuteronomy 15. And we're going to look at verse number 7, Deuteronomy 15, verse 7. Uh, we introduced this last week, and it's going to be our script, mission scripture um, going forward. And our prayer is that as you're going to Deuteronomy 15, that these scriptures that we go over every month, you'll start meditating on them, reading them, learning from them, studying from them, uh, so they can continue to form our hearts and form our minds as it relates to how we interact with people. So Deuteronomy 15, we're going to look at verse number 7. When you have it, say amen. amen. So if there be among you a poor man, one of thy brethren within thy gates, in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, don't harden your heart, nor shut your hand from your brother, but open your hand wide unto him, and he sh and shall surely lend him sufficient for his need in which he wanted. Watch the word, and y'all beware that there be not a thought in your, in your wicked heart, your hard heart, saying the seventh year, the year of release is at hand. But I be evil against a poor brother, and thou givest him nothing, and he cries to the Lord against thee, and it be a sin unto thee. Thou shalt surely give him, and thine heart shall not be grieved when thou givest unto him, because that for this thing the Lord thy God shall bless you in all your works. Somebody say all. And in all that thou puttest thy hand unto. For the poor shall never cease out of the land. Therefore I command thee, saying, Thou shalt open your hand wide unto your brother, the poor, the needy in the land. The Bible talks to us a lot about our hearts. And it's always funny to me when people say, God knows my heart. And the scripture says, that's the problem. Something's wrong with it. The Bible says it's deceitfully wicked above all things. That's the challenge, is our hearts. And what God is showing us is that giving is a matter of the heart. A hard heart leads to a shut hand. 
an open heart leads to an open hand. If you ever met a stingy person, it means their heart is stingy. His heart is hard. You ever meet a generous person, you're, you see a person whose heart is wide open towards others. So giving is a heart test. It's a test of how open our hearts are. But watch this, it's also a test of our attitude. In Deuteronomy 15, he says, don't be grieved when you give. He says, don't be mad that you got to do it here, <laughs> right? Don't do it under obligation because people can't see our hearts, but God sees our hearts when we give. And God says, don't be grieved when you do it. Paul tells us in Corinthians that God wants us to give with a cheerful heart, a worshipful heart, a rejoicing heart. Why? Because God's been so good to us. We're blessed to be a blessing to somebody else because God has given it to us, which means we're blessed already. A worshiping heart is a giving heart. A giving heart looks to help people. A giving heart looks to serve. And the Bible lets us know in Deuteronomy that this heart that opens, that is open, allows God to give back to that person more. He said, I'll bless you in all of your works. And all that your hand touches when you live a life to bless the poor. Ladies and gentlemen, our missions offering is coming. The information should be on the screen if you're giving online or by your phone. somebody give the Lord a praise in this place today come on the song says I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth how many come here to bless the Lord today how many come to speak well of the Lord how many have had a praise in your heart all week and you just need to let it out come on now's your opportunity I need you to get on your feet right now and just give God an expression of praise an authentic expression of worship I need somebody to give God what he deserves. Is he worthy? 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 Somebody bless him right now. Somebody bless him right now. You may have had a bad week, but you can still give God the praise. You may have had a bad day, but you can still give God the praise. Because my experience is that God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. He's never had a bad day. He's never had a bad season. He doesn't sleep. He doesn't take a nap. He's always good. He's good in all things. He's good at all times. Yeah, 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 Come on, come 
on, come on, come on. Let's fill this atmosphere with the spirit of praise. Yes, 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 yes. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Come on, praise him right now. The psalmist said, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, our God is worthy. Worthy to be praised. Worthy to be praised. Worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be praised. There's a spirit of praise in here right now. We just need to release it. Come on, just release a praise into the atmosphere. Come on, somebody have, right now, from the fruit of your lips, open up your mouth. Yes, yes, yes. Don't you realize that your praise boasts on God? Your praise boasts on God. When you release a praise in the presence of other people, what you are really saying, you're speaking volumes in that one, in that one utterance. Because they know that if your experience is anything like them, you shouldn't be giving God praise. Because the one consistent that we all experience in life is that life is hard. The thing that I had to realize when I grew up is that life is not fair. Life will chew you up and spit you out. But the very fact that in spite of all of that, you can give God praise, that's a boast. The young people say that's a flex. That's a flex. You showing them that you serve a God that will be able to give you joy when the world is giving you sorrow. When the world is giving you grief, you can have dancing for mourning. That when the world gives you ashes, God can take those ashes and give you beauty. Can we take a minute to flex? Can we take a minute to flex? Can we take a minute to flex on our... Yes, yes. Has he done anything for you? Has he ever made a way? Has he ever brought you out? Has he ever brought you through? Has he ever healed you? Has he ever delivered you? Has he ever rocked you when you were losing your mind? Has he ever kept your mind? Has he ever allowed you? Woo. Yes, sir, yes, sir. There's a spirit of praise in this place today. My God, it's a beautiful thing. I believe it's Psalm 1 and 33 that says behold how good and pleasant it is for brothers and sisters to dwell together in unity you know the, the thing about unity is that when we are connected through our praise the blessing that falls on one of us falls on all of us you want to know why because when the body is connected if the head gets anointed the entire body gets anointed so the thing that connects us is praise the things that connects us is worship and when God starts the blessing the blessing will touch the entire body nobody will be left behind nobody will be without a blessing that's why we give him praise today and he's here he's here this song is a song that I wrote a few years ago and it simply says I live to give him praise I don't care what I'm going through. I don't care what the outside experience is. My testimony is that I give God praise at all times. And I want you to put your hands together like this with me. It's a simple song. It says this. Lord, I live to give you praise. Lord, I live. Hallelujah. 
honor and glory. Said I live to give you praise. Come on, with my whole heart. With my whole heart. Said I will bless you. I will bless you. And in my spirit. In my spirit I'll offer you I'll praise. Offer you praise for you deserve.
Come on, we're going to sing it one more time. Lift your voice. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say the hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say the hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say the hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say the hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's the highest praise. Hallelujah. When you're feeling He's already done enough. That's worthy. Hallelujah anyhow. Still sick waiting on your healing. Hallelujah. Still going through a divorce, but hallelujah. Still waiting for your kids to come back home, but hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Give it to him. Give it to him. Give it to him. Give it to him. Give him the praise. He's worthy of it. He never left you. When other people gave up on you, it was God that was by your side. He said, I'll never leave you. And he never left you. David said, I was young, but now I'm old. And I've never seen the righteous forsaken. This is why we give him praise. This is why we give him praise. Come on, just start saying what you're thankful for. Just start saying what you're thankful for. Somebody say for your grace. Somebody say for your mercy. Somebody say for your faithfulness. Somebody say for loving me. Somebody say for healing me. For somebody say for bringing me out, for bringing me through. Come on, testify to the atmosphere. Testify to the atmosphere. We serve a wonderful God. A God that has done so much that there is an overflowing amount of praise inside of us. Come on, testify to those who have yet to experience his goodness. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Pour out on us, God. Pour out your spirit on us right now. Pour out your spirit on us right now, God. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes. We worship you, oh God. Oh, thank you for your presence, God. Thank you for your presence. It is the reason that we came, and we thank you for abiding with us. We worship you, Lord. We worship you. We worship you. 
worship Christ, our Lord. We worship Christ, our Lord. We lift our hands to Him. Can we sing that all together? Everybody sing. We worship. We worship Christ. We worship Christ. We worship Christ. Say we magnify your name. Say we magnify your name. Your name. We, we magnify, magnify your name. We lift our hands. Worship is always our destination in a service. We, we worship Christ. We want to give God all that we are. Our Lord. And we want to commune with him. That's why we live. We, live. we surrender to him. Our hands. Our hands. To him. To him. To him. bless you.
Come on, everybody. Come on. Let's worship him. Come on, come on, come on. Give him your heart today. Give him your heart. The Bible says clap those hands, O ye people. The Bible says shout with the voice of triumph. For the Lord is good. And he's worthy of what we're doing right now. Come on, bless him. Come on, bless him. Hallelujah. Come on, bless him. Hallelujah. Healing's in the room. Hallelujah. Salvation in his presence. The Bible says in his presence is fullness of joy. Hallelujah. Father, we bless your name once again for this incredible opportunity you have provided for us this morning. Our presence here is no accident. We're here today because we have been the benefactors of grace and mercy all week. Your loving, powerful, protective hand has been shadowing us all week long. We thank you right now that there are some things that you did not allow to happen to us. The songwriter said, if we had seen the unseen dangers, we'd be praising your name right now. Thank you for the things you did not allow. Hallelujah. Now, God, we've come. We've come praying and worshiping opening our hearts to you. We know there are some people here that need to know you better. Some folk with us today don't know you at all. But God, you brought us together one more time. That those that do not know you would give their lives to you. Those that need to come back to you would come on back. Those that realize that this is the atmosphere they've been looking for they found their home today. Thank you for those watching us around the world, those who have pressed their way over the miles to get here once again. Bless their effort today. Give us a word that's going to make a difference. Increase your glory in our lives. Put some weight on us before we leave this place. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing and what you're going to do right now. Now in the name of Jesus, in the victory presence that you provide, I rebuke every illness in this place. And I speak a blessing on every cell, every organ, and every function in these bodies in Jesus' name. We know you're concerned about us. Because your word says you'll supply every need. You say if there's anything wrong, pray the prayer of faith. Anoint with oil. And whatever is wrong shall be made right. And we thank you. You've given us your oil. We're speaking to those mountains. Those obstacles, those problems, those sicknesses have got to move. We command victory this afternoon. We believe for your victory in our lives. Bless the things we're concerned about. You told us in your word to cast our care upon you. In other words, Led, you said, don't carry it, throw it to me. The old folk used to say, put it on the altar and leave it there. I thank you now for the advantage of the Holy Spirit. I ask you to open our minds and our hearts so we can hear, understand, and believe your word in this moment. We need a word from the Lord. Yes for yesterday. Yes for tomorrow. 
but we need one for right now. Thank you in advance for those that will be saved today. Thank you for the strength of faith increasing, not just believing, but in the power of your resurrection. I pray now, as we begin to bless those in front of us, beside us, behind us, as we release your power, as we speak a blessing over each other right now, as one brick strengthens the other, one stone strengthens the other, we bless one another now. We lift our voices and speak the blessing of Jesus on others' lives. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Take your seat. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Now, why did he tell us to say that? There's a couple of things you forgot to thank him for this week. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. There's some things that could have happened that he didn't even ever get near you. Somebody needs to say, thank you, Jesus. There was an illness that came to your door but turned around and went away. Somebody needs to say, thank you, Jesus. There was an enemy that had his eye on your house, but the guardian angels of the Lord protected everything about you. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. My, my, my. What a mighty God we serve. I don't know about the one you're looking after, but the one we serve is a mighty God. Hallelujah. Bless his wonderful name. I want to take this opportunity to formally welcome our guests who have come to worship with us today. Amen. 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 We kind of different. Um, uh, I know you might be sitting there wondering, what kind of church? They got Baptists on the sign, but something... something Something, something a little different up in this place. We want to welcome you. Uh, the kind of church that's going to greet you with open arms. Smile on our faces. Now we got a few people need to be delivered. We got you know, every family has one or two knuckleheads in it. Amen. Praise the Lord. But we welcome you today. I want you to understand that it is our mission to join hands with you and walk with you into this new life. It's, it's our mandate that when you're in trouble, we rally around you. When we don't discard our senior citizens. We we draw them closer. But when, when the devil and people think you have no one to fight with you, you got a church that's gonna stand with you, amen. That's who we are, we'll love you if you just let us. And then if you don't let us, we'll just keep trying till you do. We want to hold hands with you because sometimes we don't feel strong by ourselves. We lend each other our strength. Today is a marvelous opportunity 
for those of you who have never given your life sincerely to God to make that decision today. I know you're thinking you didn't come here to do that, but there's no reason God let you stay alive and brought you to this place. Now, I don't want anybody feeling hypocritical because you're having a hard time in life, so you try, you're trying church today. 80, 90% of all Christians are stress conversion. Yeah. Stuff was going wrong, and we figured we'd try to church, and we met God when we can. I want to show you something for just a minute. Uh, Genesis chapter 7, if you will, and then we're going to get to our message today. For those who are um, our guests today, we have a reception for you immediately following our service. I would love to meet you at the reception. Uh, you're able to ask any questions at all. You're able to connect at any, any information you need. If we feel a little strange to you, we're doing something, you know, you, we'll explain it to you. Amen. Amen. But we have some gifts for you. But we love meeting with you, having the opportunity to talk to you after service for about 15 minutes. Amen. Amen. Ain't no football game on. <laughs> NCAA on, ain't on. You don't have an appointment in Atlantic City. You, 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 At least you shouldn't. <laughs> Amen. Genesis chapter 7, are you there? Go down to verse 7. I want to show you something I think is quite interesting today. Um, now, we call ourselves a friendly church, but if you're sitting next to someone and you haven't at least said hello, I need you to do that right now. I could get real spiritual right here and say, I bind that stuck up spirit. <laughs> Genesis chapter 7. Go down to verse 7. Do you have it? I'm glad when your eyes aren't working, your glasses do. Praise the Lord. Shazam! Look at it. I can see. <laughs> Genesis chapter 7, verse 7 says, And Noah went in, and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him into the ark because of the waters of the flood, because of what was going on outside. Noah and his family went inside of clean beasts and of beasts that are not clean, clean and not so clean, of fowls and of everything that creeps, even creeps. There went in two and two unto Noah into the ark, the male and the female, as God had commanded. And it came to pass after seven days, given you since last week, that the waters of the flood were upon the earth. Tell your neighbor no questions asked. I don't think we have to be particularly astute to know that the world outside of us is increasingly more troubled. And I don't know about you, but uh, having been a fan of news every day, I've grown fatigued and have to now watch the news simply for information and realize the fatigue has come from the reality that there's so much bad going on outside that the only way you get peace is to seek some peace inside. It is, it is an increasing awareness of all of us that violence is increasing exponentially. Uh, 
lifespan predictions are changing. People are called old heads now in their 30s. <laughs> simply because the expectancy of how long you're going to live has changed radically. We see more young people looking like they've lived 60 years than we've ever seen before. You look at the bus stop, go to the train station, and folk have this perpetual worried look on their face as if the weight of the world is on their shoulders. They, and it's because everywhere they go, the stresses appear to be the same. And part of the problem is, is that, uh, you know, it starts to feel like there's not much safety in humanity. There, there's no safe place. Yeah, but God has, has shown us in this Genesis record that he requires Noah to build a safe place. And it's a place, safe place where we see the first biblical indication of the whosoever. And most people, because of the English language, we pass over that very easily we see the word whosoever, we pass right over it. Um, but if, if I can just expand your awareness for just a moment. The, 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 the whosoever is in the two by two. The whosoever is in those that consider themselves clean and those who knew like I knew I was unclean. I'm looking for real people right through here. Amen. I didn't want to get saved. I needed to get saved. Yeah. You're, not, you're not hearing what I'm saying. I didn't, this, 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 for me, it was a do or die thing. Not meaning I was going to drop dead physically, but what I was living was not going to lead me to what I wanted to be. Am I making sense to anybody? And I had these preconceptions that uh, I had to be right to get saved. That I had to fix everything and then come to the Lord. But God tells the unclean to come in and those that people considered clean to come in. I'm not talking right today. So, so, so what, I'm, what, I'm, what I'm saying to us this afternoon is that if you ain't dirty some kind of way, there's nothing for God to do. But since I know ain't none of us clean, the Bible says there is none righteous, no, not one. So God brings them into the, to the ark, and um, the text is real clear. It says, I need you to know, I need you to open the door. I need you to make only one window. And what he was doing was training everything in the ark that when the storm hit, there was only one way to look. We make a mistake when crisis hits. We start looking to our friends from side to side, looking at our experience, looking at our achievements, when all we really need to do is what? That's where my help comes from. The Bible says my help comes from the Lord. We're too weak in our bodies to help ourselves. So God puts out this whosoever thing. Whosoever you are, wherever you come from, 
whatever kind of beast you've been. Ain't nobody talking to me. I lost you right there. There's a beast in all of us. Oh, I need to talk to some real folk. I said there's a beast in all of us. Some of us have him on a leash. Some of us have him tied to a tree. But there is a beast in... I ain't preaching yet, I'm just talking to you. So, so God, so God um, invites untamed spirits into his presence. The Bible says that Jesus testifies, I haven't come looking for people that think they have it together. Amen. They haven't come looking for well folk. I've come looking for people that come to the revelation something ain't right. Something, something. You can't see it because I dress it up good. I say things that don't give an indication but when I'm by myself I know something says, y'all come on in here with me. I told you before, he didn't tell no one them to go in the ark. He told them to come. Now this is small, but it's significant. You tell people to go where you're not. But you tell them to come where you are. So he says, come into this house, magnify his name. He didn't say go into the house, he said come. Because I tell you to come where I am. So why does he tell them to come? Because God specializes in putting people together that would have never met. People that if you had a choice, you wouldn't sit next to them. But God's ark is full of predators and prey when they come in. But once he starts feeding them all in there, the prey ain't prey no more. And the predators don't want to be predators anymore because he tames the beast in everybody if you'll simply just come in where he is. I'm amazed at the invitation. It's a whosoever invitation. Anybody, everybody that's done anything and everything. Now, I know some of you are grading your sin right now. You know, some of y'all pros, some of y'all amateurs. But you're sitting together, right? amen. I know you're great in your sin. I was real bad. I wasn't that bad. But everybody in here was bad. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Father, we bless your name now. Ask you for the help of the Holy Spirit that you put a yes in our minds and in our hearts that today's the day I come into your ark. I come into your presence. I come into your church. Lord, those that never have given their lives to you, today they say yes. Those that gave their lives to you and have said yes a half a dozen times already, Today's the day they come back, and this time they do it right. There are those that already love you, Lord, need a church. The devil knows they need one. 
They've been searching for an atmosphere, searching for a place, and you led us here today. That means, Lord, you're an answer to my prayer today. I give you praise right now for the yes in their minds, the yes in their hearts. I'm coming to you, Lord, today. I'll let nothing hold me back. I'm coming back to you, Lord. I'll let nothing hold me back. I got me a new family now, and nothing will hold me. Oh, I felt that. I got new brothers and sisters, new cousins in them. Thank you for being our father. In Jesus' name, amen. Stand on your feet with me for just a second. If you've never given your life to the Lord sincerely, won't you accept God's invitation? You don't have to come by yourself. There's somebody else here just like you that needs to come. If you need to give your life to the Lord, I need you to meet me down here right now. If you need to come back to the Lord, I need you to meet me right here, right now. If you need to connect with this house, you're already saved, I need you to come meet me right here, right now. Don't worry about what you've done. Don't start grading your sin. I can guarantee you what you've done is no worse than anybody in this place. I need you to step into the nearest aisle and come meet me at this altar. Allow us to pray with you. Allow us to lead you to the Lord. Here they come. Hey, daughter. How you doing? God bless you. Good job. Good job. Come on. Come on, Rhonda. If you're here, I need you to come. Wait right there. It's good. It's good. Here they come. They're good right there. Here you come. several of you you're really in a valley of decision right now and what you probably need is just a little help one of the great things one of the many great things about our ministry is that our members are always willing to take this walk with you we, we always willing to get excited want to be a part of what God is trying to do in your life. So if you know you need to be saved today, you've never sincerely given your life to the Lord, and you know I've been talking to you for the last 20 minutes, here come. Here come. Here
turn to one person and sincerely, sweetly say, I think my pastor might be talking to you. I think my pastor might be talking to you. Don't be afraid. Act like they owe you some money. I think my pastor is talking to you. Here they come. Here they come. Come on, come on, come on. Here they come. Come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Secondly, but just as importantly, you got saved, everybody knew it. You were on fire. Matter of fact, you were so saved you got on folks' nerves. And then some stuff happened in your life. And little by little, you walked away from the church and from God. But amazingly, God has you here today to experience what he's doing in this place. And you've been wrestling every now and then, well, you know, I need to get back with the Lord. you kind of been connecting the dots, and you realize everything started, and I started losing the fight when I stepped away from God and from his church. I want to suggest to you that you make the decision this afternoon to come back to the Lord, come back to his house. Connect the dots. You were fighting until you left. You were making it till you left. And you've been wondering, how do I get back? Respond to my voice. Here they come. <laughs> everybody standing why is he taking so long we're standing because we're your reception committee we're, 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 we're standing because heaven is doing the angels in heaven are doing what we're doing right now they're celebrating the coming of God's people The second thing is that the Bible likens evangelism to fishing. Now we may have a couple fishermen or women in the audience today, and you know when you fish, you might throw the bait out there, but they don't snap the hook right away. It takes them a minute to kind of make up their mind. And then some get hooked and they try to get free. But Jesus says, 
nobody that's in my hand will ever get out of my hand. So if you need to come back to the Lord, come. If, if, if you're already saved, you love the Lord, and now you're in a tough place, you feel like God is calling you to this place, but where you used to be, where you've been, maybe your whole life, is tugging at your heart also. Well, let's make sure you understand what a church is. A church is a place where God is in control. Church is the place where Jesus is the center of attraction. It's a place where the Bible is taught and preached. It's a place where the Holy Ghost has freedom to do whatever he wants to do. It's a place where the miracle of salvation, miracle of, here they come, healing and deliverance happen right now. Here she comes. I haven't been saved my whole life. Some of you have, but I have not been. When we were in the club, around 2 o'clock, they start blinking the light. Talking about last call. In other words, get in while you can. The lights are blinking. I'm saying last call. I'm saying, get in while you can. Why don't you step into the nearest hour? Give your life to the Lord. Come back to the Lord. Connect with your new church family. We'd love to have you. Will you help me celebrate our new brothers and sisters? somebody tell him mm, mm, mm. Yeah, Lord. let's go back to Daniel chapter 3 can y'all give me about 30 minutes can you do I got some important stuff to show you amen While you're turning to Daniel chapter 3, for those of you who are, are guests and are unaccustomed to seeing an altar call uh, before preaching, uh, the limitation to an altar call after preaching is a tradition, not a biblical mandate. Uh, the Bible does not prescribe when to fish. But the Bible does let us know that um, if a fisherman goes out all night and comes back and catches nothing, they, start, they still call him or her a fisherman. Amen. 
because they went at the right time. Jesus comes along and Luke 5 says, I need you to do it at the wrong time and on the other side of the boat. So what you've just witnessed is the wrong time and the other side of the boat. The Bible says they caught fish so much so that the net broke. So the traditional time to do it only after you finish preaching is a safe time to fail. But when you're moving in faith, you move at a time that God has told you to move. Because he's already planted something for you to catch. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? This, this thing is by faith. Another reason we stand, the collective faith of God's house. The expectation is we don't come together and nobody gets saved. It's just, we just believe God. Amen. That's why it's good to bring your unsaved relatives to Bethany. Amen. Get them in the right water. Amen. <laughs> Get them in the right water. Daniel chapter 3. Are you there yet? Okay. Let's go down to verse 19 just to refresh our memories. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury. And the form of his visage, I mean his face, displayed his anger. The form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So he was smiling at everybody else, but he wasn't smiling at them anymore. Therefore he spake and commanded they should heat the furnace one seven times or seven times more than it was wont or normally heated. So that it was already hot, but he said, I need you to heat it up seven times hotter than it normally is. He commanded the most mighty men, he got the baddest boys around him that were in the army, you see that? To bind, that means to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and to cast them into the burning fiery furnace. These men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, were bound in their coats, so they took their coats off, their stockings or their socks off, their turbans off, and their drawers off, it says other garments. That means underwear. Okay. And they tied them up with their own stuff. I don't have time to tell you. What the devil wants to do is bind your mind. Okay. So you don't know. So, so you can't think. Bind your hands so you can't work. Bind your feet so you can't move. Tie you up with your drawers. So you forget what feeling and intimacy and loving is all about tied them up, threw them in the fire. Now watch how this works. Hmm. So they were cast into the midst, right in the middle of the burning fire furnace. Somebody say the hottest part. The hottest part. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So when they opened the door, them that tied them up, died. Y'all don't understand. So the heat killed the people trying to put them in the fire. So then how did they get in? They had enough faith. Then they fell down in the midst of the fire. This is the part I like. What was this now? We just read the scripture, getting ready to tell you some stuff. Look at this now. You still with me? 22, therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the fruit is exceedingly hot, the flame of the fly slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. 23, and these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and a bad Negro. <laughs> I said Negro, didn't I? <laughs> I know who's sitting up in here, I can't. Okay. <laughs> Fell down. 
still bound in the midst of the fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar was astonished, rose up in haste, spake and said unto his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Then why in the world do I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Jesus will never let you go into a fire that he's not standing in before you get there. You got to know him. Who throws you in the trap will be killed by the trap. But because Jesus is there before you went in, you will survive. Somebody shout hallelujah. Tell your neighbor it's time to be free. We're in our series called Unlimited You. And that series is focusing us over the next few weeks on the Holy Spirit. I told you we are not going to get caught up in words whether you want to call the Spirit of God Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit. I just need you to know him no matter what you call him. Some may be sophisticated and say the Holy Spirit. That's wonderful. But since I'm from the projects, I like Holy Ghost. Seems, seems they have more oomph to it, Holy Ghost, yeah. And we, Shay's like, I gotta pray for my pastor, boy. We talked last week about how the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, is the third person in the Godhead, and that the Godhead consists of Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is the third person in the Godhead, which makes Jesus the second and God the first, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. We corrected some terminology last week and said, Trinity is the wrong word for what we're describing as the Godhead. Amen. The Godhead is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. So Trinity indicates three separate people. So the correct, the correct term for us to use, because we're talking about the three in one, is triune. Can you say that? Triune. Triune translates three in one. Tri, three, un, one. Triune. You got it? The Holy Spirit, therefore, had to be given to us because God had to have an um, incorruptible connection to human beings. Uh -huh. So the Holy Spirit becomes, if you will, the mediator once Jesus goes back. Because when Jesus is here, he's the face of the Spirit. He's the face of God. He's the physical representation of God, the physical representation of God the physical representation of God on earth. I'm going to let that sink. So Jesus, this man, became the physical representation of God on earth. So when Jesus was here, he was the mediator between God and humanity. Am I making sense? Watch how this works now. So, so, so Jesus then goes to the cross, he resurrects, he's now sitting at the right hand of the Father, but he said, I will not leave you without a comforter. Comforter means one who stands beside or walks beside you, or better, walks with you. So in the Old Testament, most of the saints, most of the saints 
had an external relationship with God. But in the New Testament, we have an internal relationship with God. And the only way God can get inside us is to give us his spirit. Yeah. Right, now let me show you how this looks now. So the Bible lets us know that this three in one, I demonstrated to you last week. Brother Rich helped me out. We talked about the fact that he was a father, a son, and a man. And no matter what he was doing, he was no less that in any form. That when he went to see his mother, he was a son. When he talked to his children, you got it? When he goes to work, since he in charge, he is a man. But he's never not all three of those. Did you get it? All right, let me show you something now. Let me show you something. So, so let's, let's, let's take a look, and I'll show you how this works. So if the Holy Spirit is our connection, say connection, connection. between God and us, okay, because now Jesus is sitting at the right hand of God on the throne talking to God about us 24-7. So I'm glad he likes his job, and I'm glad he likes overtime. Because we obviously keep him busy trying to keep God off of us. He ain't just up there talking about answering their prayers. He's up there talking about don't kill him yet. I'm still working with him. Don't, 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 don't mess him up. Don't, I know they are worthy of it, but you keep them alive because they starting to get better. Somebody say thank God for that. Because Jesus is our intercessor. All right, watch this, deep Christians. Intercessors are intercessors, pure intercessors, because they don't mind praying for people to receive what they don't deserve. Jesus is living to make intercession for us, praying for us to receive not so much what we do deserve, because we don't need an intercessor for that. He praying we get what we don't deserve. And the book says he lives to do that. That's how this works. So, so um, Rich, do me a favor. He going to be God today. Go, go up here. Yeah, go right there, right there. And Chandler and Ray, come here, please. All right, go up a little further, Rich. Stand, no, stay right there. Give me that, give me your hand. Give me yours. All right. Okay, Rich, give me yours. The children are us. The father's up here. But we need a connection called the Holy Ghost. Did you get that? He can answer our prayers, hear our prayers, he can work through us because of the connection. All right, thank you. Thank you. That's how this works. Now, watch. Did you see it? All right. So now that you got the Holy Ghost, because you're saved, somebody say, I'm connected. I'm connected. Okay. Watch how this works. So now the power of God comes from Him through you to whatever you're praying about. Am I making sense to you? I'm glad you have the Holy Ghost. But you need to know how to have a cooperative relationship with him. Because it's not that God doesn't want to deliver. It's sometimes we muddy up the works. But I'm glad every child of God is connected to God by his spirit. You got it. All right, now, so Jesus comes along, and he says something outrageous. He said, when you've seen me, you've seen the Father. He said, you're looking at God walking around on two feet. So Jesus was the first, how you feeling? All right, Jesus was the first fully human being. I knew it was going to get quiet. You think God sent him down here half human? 
He was all God and 100% human being at the same time. Let me show you why. Go to Colossians. Did I lose you? Go to Colossians. We're going to go to chapter 2. Let me know when you get there. Okay. Colossians chapter 2. Let me know when you get there. Verse 8 says, Beware lest any individual spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. Watch this. After or according to the traditions of people. After the rudiments or the habits or the flow of the world and not after Christ. Watch this. For in him, Christ, dwells all the fullness of the Godhead. What's the last word? What's the word? So the Father, Son, the Holy Ghost, in all its fullness, dwelled in Jesus Christ. And it said, not just spirit, but y'all not getting it. So all of God, all of Christ, all of the Holy Ghost, in Jesus. Am I making sense to anybody? Yeah. Now the reason he's able to do that, because when he saved you, he changed you from a mere body to a temple. He lives in temples. Are you still with me? And now watch this. So, so now you're saved, right? And you know you got the Holy Ghost, right? All right, let me show you something now. Let me show you something. Go, so, 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 mm, 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 Go to chapter one. I'm so excited to show you all this stuff. I can't, but I'm beside myself. Because I know what's going to happen to you after this. Because God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or think. Watch this. According to the working of his power. So when you understand your relationship with God and his spirit, you will be able to allow him to do exceeding and abundantly above all you could ask or think because the Holy Ghost wants to make you the unlimited you. Somebody say no limits. No limits. Say it like you mean it, no limits. no limits. I didn't tell you to talk to anybody because I want you to talk to you. Say no limits. No limits. Nothing will be impossible if you believe. Watch, watch, watch how this works now. Watch how this works. Mm -hmm. Colossians chapter 1, verse 9. Are you there? Ooh. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and desire that you might be filled now, let's talk about that word for a minute. When you see the word filled in the New Testament, it means to come under the control of. So when, when they were in the upper room and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, they came under the control of God by way of his spirit. All right. so, so, so you don't run out of gas by Wednesday. I know what they meant when they taught us this. You know, they told us we need to come to church midweek yes, because you need to be filled again. Yes, sir. Like you sprung a leak yes, sir. between Sunday. Yes, sir. That can't be possible because the Bible says, he says, I'll never leave you, yes, nor will I forsake you. Amen. And he's not just talking about part of him, he's talking about all of him. Yes. All right, watch where we go now. Okay, I'm messing with you, I realize it. My grandmama taught me some stuff. I understand her motivation was right, yes, but she was dead wrong. <laughs> she only taught me what she was taught. I didn't say she was, you know, she's saved sure enough. She taught me how to pray now. She just, she just wasn't, you know, 
I just didn't know all this. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, and did not cease to pray for you, and desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will, yield yourself to the knowledge of his will for you, in all wisdom, that's knowledge put in practice, and spiritual understanding. Hmm. That ye might walk worthy of the Lord, under all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. Hmm. So when we look at this thing about the Godhead, the Bible tells us that Christ is now in you, and he's the hope of glory. It means that hopefully in our lives, his glory will be revealed by our relationship with him. But he can't get here without the Holy Ghost. Don't let anybody who's saved tell you that you can be authentically saved and not have the Spirit of God. Amen. Amen. If we could change ourselves, Christ would not have had to die on the cross. We would not have needed the Holy Ghost if we could transform our own mind. Is this making sense to anybody? All right, watch how this works now. Stay with me. Stay with me. There was something else I wanted to show you, but it'll come to me in a second. Go to Matthew, Mark chapter 4. Go to Mark chapter 4. Is Pastor Nick down here somewhere? Is he upstairs? Mark chapter 4. When you get there, say amen. amen. All right, now I want you to go down to verse 11. I want to show you something. So we understand that glory appears outwardly so unbelievers can see Christ through us. His life through his glory on us. All right, now, so this whole Christ in us thing is a, is a dilemma for a lot of people because it sounds kind of spooky. Amen. You know, and, and it's mysterious, but it's not spooky. All right. so, so, so the problem is, how, okay, I'm out of time. So how do you get all of God into this brother right here? into this sister right here. Now we know the Bible just taught us that in Christ dwell the Godhead bodily. That God fixed his spirit so that all of him could dwell in a body who happened to be named Jesus. So you got all of God in this man named Jesus. And then the Bible tells us to be Christ-like or like Christ. Hmm. So, so, so here's, here's the deal. So, so, so where God is, to my Godhead now, Jesus is. You can't have one without the other. Where Jesus is, the Holy Ghost is. Can't have one. That ain't the good part. That ain't the good part. <laughs> Just the part I've been waiting. So, so this thing's a mystery. Yes. Amen. So, so, so the Bible says in Mark chapter 4, verse 11, it's given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. I'm not hiding it from you. All right. Now, do we all agree? Do we all agree that God is a spirit? Yes. Yes. And we need to be glad that he is. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Cause I don't want him busy in LA. All right. And he can't handle my business in New Jersey. Yes. So he gotta be everywhere yes. at the same time. Yes. Cause God is a spirit. Yes. Okay. Everybody good? Okay. All right. Got it. You got it? Yes. All right. yeah. God is a spirit. So he everywhere. He everywhere at the same time. So, if 
God is in Christ. The Holy Ghost is in Christ. And Christ has a body. God is a king. So his kingdom is where he is. So now, in Jesus Christ's body, was God, Christ, the Holy Ghost, and the kingdom. And then the Bible says in red writing, it's given to you to know the mystery of the kingdom. In other words, how's all that in this little woman right here? Hot dog, I'm ready to tell you. That's it. Check this out. Check this out. Check this out. Come on, I'm excited come on. about this come thing. On, come on. I'm excited. Yes, sir. Check this out. Check this out. So, 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 God is a spirit. Yes. Yes, sir. So the world is full of oxygen. Mm. All right. That same oxygen is in your house. Yes. Yes. Nothing lacking in it. Uh-huh. All the same oxygen. came into this church yeah. same oxygen that's in the atmosphere yeah. is in this building right here yeah. 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 then God messes around calls you a house come on Bishop come on same oxygen yeah. that's in the universe much bigger place yeah. same oxygen that's in your house yeah. same oxygen that's in this building yeah. is the same oxygen that's in you because God is a spirit. Amen. So he puts all of him yeah. in you and I. Hallelujah. That's how he fits. Because yeah. he's like oxygen. Yes, sir. I told you they call him the wind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They call him the breath of God. Hallelujah. Oh God, they call him the wind. Ooh, Hallelujah. they call him the wind Hallelujah. of God. They call him the breath of the Holy Ghost. same God in Jesus is the same God in you because of the Holy Ghost. You're going to watch your worship change during this series. Because it said the only way you can do it right is spirit and in truth. Know who God is for real and have the connection of the Holy Ghost. Hey, God! I got good news. I got bad news. All right, let me show you one more scripture, then we'll go. You need this one to put a stamp on today's understanding. Go to Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. And y'all stand up so I'll stop. Okay. Amen. <laughs> y'all be obedient. Stand up so I'll stop. <laughs> y'all say, I ain't standing up. <laughs> Thank you. Luke chapter 4. Everybody got it? Yeah? All right. We need to go down to... Um, Oh, I'm sorry, Mark 4. Okay, yeah, I'm like, I'm, I'm glad I put my glasses on so I could see. Mark chapter 4. All right, we're there. That's the mystery of the kingdom. All right. All right. Luke chapter 4. I got your mark? All right, that's going to take me too long. Go to Luke. 
I'll go back to Mark next week. Luke 4, 17. Do you have it? And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah, and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. So Jesus goes to the synagogue. They hand him what we would call a Bible. They hand him the record, and Jesus opens up to the place where they're talking about him. He says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me, empowered me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has set me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, to recover sight to the blind, to set them that li at liberty that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. He closed the book, gave it again to the minister, and sat down. The eyes of all of them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. They couldn't take their eyes off him. And he began to say unto them, this day is the scripture fulfilled in your hearing. Because of the presence of the Holy Spirit, you have the almighty God dwelling in you. I got good news for you and I have challenging news for you. The Spirit can only do in you what you allow Him to do. There are some things that God has promised Himself for you that are dependent upon our cooperative relationship with the Holy Ghost. Over the next few weeks, I'm not going to teach you to respond to the chills that you feel. I need you to know the Holy Ghost for yourself and know how to respond to him. Because I've got some real good news for you. For those of you who haven't gotten um, the, uh, the message on the eclipse and the earthquakes and the jewels, you need to get that and maybe look at that this afternoon. Um, it's called uh, Leap Years, Earthquakes, and Eclipses. You need to know that 2024, because it's a leap year, is a pregnant year. That if you will allow God to guide you, he will birth those things that the year is pregnant for you. He's got some stuff that's in the oven for you that he wants you to have. But we've got to cooperate with him. How do I do that? You don't have to get spooky. You don't have to wait for a chill. You don't, you know, you don't have to do crazy stuff like a bird flew across the car. Was God trying to tell me? No. <laughs> Jesus says, my words are spirit and they are life. So we learn the Bible to learn how God moves by his spirit. Something fundamental. When, Jesus, when God gets ready to create, the Holy Ghost is waiting, but the Holy Ghost doesn't move until God speaks. So, God is looking at what looks like confusion and looks like nobody can fix it, but God knows he can. So the Holy Ghost positions himself over whatever has God's attention. I need you to look at your neighbor right now. Don't say a word. I don't need you distracted. I need you looking at them. The focus of your attention. You don't need to know what needs to be fixed. But you do need to understand you're made in the image and likeness of God. And that image and likeness is activated by the Holy Ghost. They got your attention? They already have the Holy Ghost. So now the Holy Spirit is just waiting for a word from you. 
Repeat after me. I don't know what it is, but I know who knows. In the name of Jesus, by the power of his word and the Holy Spirit, whatever it is, it's fixed now in Jesus' name. Now you ought to be praising God right there. Holy Ghost is moving right now. Holy Ghost is moving right now. In that body, in that heart, in that mind, Holy Ghost is moving right now. Healing is happening right now. Deliverance is happening right now, right now, right now, right now. Hallelujah. It's all right to praise him. If you receive the blessing, show some sign. If you received it, shout hallelujah. Holy Ghost is moving right now. Holy Spirit moving right now. Hallelujah. In case there's anyone else needs to be saved today, I want you to come right now. You need to come back to the Lord. Come right now. You need to connect with this house. Come right now. If you hesitated in the first wave, come in this one. Amen. Be a part of this one. Church, say amen. amen. Take your seats for just a second. We're going to get out of here. Um, yeah, let me have this baby. Okay, take all that. Y'all say amen for my armor bearers this morning. Praise the Lord. Where's the announcements? Thank you, baby. All right, listen up, y'all. All our guests, of course, um, please stop by the reception and see me before you go. I'd love to talk to you. We have a gift for you. Ask any questions at all about anything that happened today, anything about our ministry. We want you to feel comfortable. You can't feel comfortable about what you don't know. Amen. Amen. All right. Out these doors to my left, someone will be in the hallway to greet you. Today is our Get Connected Day. This is the day when you can make the decision after speaking to our leaders, they're, all, they're in the hallways, all the ministries are represented in the hallways. Stop by, talk to the leaders. The leaders will inform you as to what type of ministry it is. And you can make a decision today where you're going to serve in God's house. Amen. Amen. All right, there's something for everyone, but you need to go find out. Amen. Amen. Don't sit there and be spooky. I'm waiting for the Lord um, to, sh to show Bishop my face while he praying. Come on now. Go out there, meet the leaders, find a place to work in ministry. Amen? Amen. All right. Uh, Wednesday, the 24th, 7 p.m., we'll be starting our midweek Bible study for grades K through 5. So you can come to Bible study, drop your kids off, pick them up after. Amen. Now, if your child is a baby's kid, we need to know. You need to be honest now. Don't just drop them up there and start saying, bless them, Lord. Don't do that. Don't, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Mm -mm. You've already heard the Power of God announcements. You can, you can register today. Uh, there's a table in the hallway where you can register for Power of God. I do, I do recommend that if you are going to register and you're seat sensitive, you need to do that. Amen. All right, because they're, they're calling from all over. They're coming from all over. They're flying in from California, Texas, everywhere. Not everywhere, everywhere. <laughs> um, you've, you've heard all the announcements. All right, thank you, sir. It's offering time in the house of God. Come on, y'all, do better than that. Only reason I'm saying it Remind you how good God has been to you. Amen. God says, bring the tithe and the offering into the storehouse. The brown basket is for your regular tithe and offering. The white basket is for your sacrificial gift. Now, um, 
Most of you know that we have adopted uh, a village in Malawi that I will be going there. What we plan on doing is building a water treatment plant for them. Amen. Amen. Providing them with the things that they need. And we're also, I'm going to be praying about it. I want you praying about it. We're going to allow the children to choose us individually to be their sponsor. So it's not going to be, that one's cute, I want that one. No. We, we're going to have the honor of them looking at us in a photo and say, that's who I want right there. And watch how God guides them to you. And to support them, it's only 39 bucks a month. That's, that's not lunch money for most of us, amen. $39 a month. To give them everything they need. Clothing, food three times a day, medical care, all that. Amen. amen. All right, so we'll tell you more as we go on. Uh, we'll be taking a mission trip to Malawi in September, um, but we're, we're doing what's necessary. We also have been promised partnership with the United Nations to help us do some real important work in Malawi. Amen. Amen. So we're excited about that. We're excited about that. This is what we sacrifice for. We bring God the tithe and the offering, give him the sacrifice so we can take care of our senior citizens. Somebody say amen. amen. So we can put clothes on people that can't afford to buy them. Say amen. amen. So we can advocate for children in schools that have no one to stand up for them. Please say amen. amen. Make sure marginalized people get medical care, amen. drug treatment, all that stuff. That's what your sacrifice helps us do. Amen? Amen? It also helps us get rid of the mortgage on this place. Praise yes. the Lord. I had hair before we got the mortgage. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Took it out strand by strand. And what was left went gray, one hair after another. Praise the Lord. Y'all ready to give? Those of you watching us online, your instructions are on the screen. Those of you giving electronically, we thank God for you. Just make sure you hit send. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's stand on our feet. Thank you for your patience today. I needed to get that nugget into your spirit. Because next week we're going to go even further. Amen? Amen? All right. Let's pray. God, I thank you once again for this great opportunity you provided for us. We understand that your spirit is our connection to you. Thank you that your Holy Spirit is the agent of transformation and change in our lives. Thank you that your Spirit empowers us with your power. Thank you that you lead us and guide us by your Spirit. Thank you that without your Spirit, we could not be led by you. We could not be empowered by you. Thank you for what is up ahead of us. Thank you that you're going to burn those things that bind us off of us by the power of your Spirit. Now, God, bless those that give. Give them a biblical return, 30, 60, 100, 1,000 times more, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Everybody walking, please. Everybody giving. Guests, I'll see you at the reception. Praise the Lord. I'm so glad you're taking the time to join us today here on the Encounter Worship Experience here at Bethany Church, the Transformation Church in Lindewald, New Jersey. We are in a life-changing series focused on the Holy Ghost called the Unlimited You, meaning that the Holy Spirit by God will take off all the limitations in your life, will untie those things that have bound you for however many years, however many seasons, that God is going to open up his kingdom to you in such a way that you will never turn back and you will refuse to look back except to give God praise for how far he has brought you. I'm so honored that you joined us today, uh, took part in our worship, took part in our praise, took part in our learning, the building of our faith, but also taking part in investing in God's work that we might make a difference around the world, not just in this community, not just in the community, not just in the region, not just in the nation, but around the world. You help us to do things far greater than we can do in ourselves. Thank you today for those of you who gave your life to the Lord. Write us on the site, let us know how the ministry is blessing you, how the word is blessing you. 
but also if you gave your life to the Lord, came back to the Lord, connected with our church, we're glad you did that today. Now look, if you're geographically locked out, but you want to be a part of us, a greater part, you can join our Connections Church. That's our virtual church that was um, birthed during, the con during COVID. We have members from around the nation, some from around the world. We want you to be a part of what God is doing. Now I want you to stay safe. I want you to stay strong and remember this. Faith acts like a thing is so, even when it's not so, that it might be so. God bless you. See you Wednesday night. Here for more of what God has to say. Bye-bye.